to continue with uh, sports photography. Um, and uh, we'll first welcome Stephen McCarthy, who is the winner in the sports single category um, for this extraordinary picture of the scrum. photo agency Sports File, based in Ireland, has covered two Olympic Games, numerous sporting events around the world, and this photograph was taken, the, the winning photograph was taken during a Lions tour in June 2017. Stephen, tell us, what is the Lions tour? So, um, a Lions tour, they're referred to as the British and Irish Lions, uh, they're the team in red in this picture, and the British and Irish Lions are the best rugby players from Ireland, England, Scotland, um, and Wales. And they come together to form this, this, this team called the British and Irish Lions. Every four years, they travel to either um, Australia, New Zealand, or South Africa to play three test games against the host countries. In theory, it should be easy because you've got the best players from the four countries coming against one team. But the challenge they have is they only come together um, and have to, you have to get these players who are usually playing against each other week in, week out, and all of a sudden they have to play as one team against a team who have been together for, for years and years, probably through underage structures. So it's a serious challenge, and they don't often win. So the result of these three tests in New Zealand from last year was it was a draw. So they spent six weeks in New Zealand, they played 10 games, seven warm up games, and three test matches, and the result in the end after six weeks was a draw. Um, you'd imagine after, after all that at the time they could have played another 10 minutes and got a winner, but they didn't. Where was this uh, picture taken? Uh, this picture was taken in Rotorua, uh, on a Rotorua in, uh, in New Zealand, uh, on a really wet, damp night. Um, so it's, they're playing a team called the New Zealand Maoris. So it's not the full New Zealand All Blacks team, which are quite famous across the world. This is the Maoris. Maoris have, still hold their traditional values so much and you have to prove that you're a Maori to be able to play on this team. Over the years, the lines have become blurred with international transfers and residency rules. This time around, with the Maoris, they still hold those values. You have to prove that you're a Maori to be able to play on this team. The thing I, uh, that I love about their values, even though I was covering the British and Irish Lions, I did love that it was in New Zealand and it's the home of rugby, really. Um, I love that over the years, the lines have somewhat lost their value. It's become a commercial uh, entity now. That their commercial value is so high that they have so many commitments that it's not really what they were founded for years ago. People might tell you differently and they'd still try and hold on to it, but in my honest view, I think they've lost their values. So they're playing against a team that is so traditional in the Maori All Blacks, and that's what I love about it. Um, so going back to the picture, as you can see, it's a wet, damp night, and that's what gave the steam. The, the lighting in the stadium was so harsh and contrasty that the fall off from the pitch to the bleachers went from so bright to really dark, and that's what gives the steam. So the steam is coming from the bodies engaging in what is referred to as a scrum in rugby. The bodies have engaged, and has created. this is the body heat that's rising uh, from, from the scrum. You'd see it from time to time, especially around winter months when rugby is played, you'd see this steam, but you'd never see it so high. And that's, I think, what has led to this picture being up here today. What was the temperature that day? Very cold, is all I remember. I don't remember the, the degrees, but I know I had a lot of layers on, so I'm not sure how we could get up and down the sidelines, but I had a lot of layers on and it was very cold that night. They weren't cold. They, they weren't cold, no, as you can see. When you're running around the pitch for 80 minutes, I'm sure you'll warm up. And when you took this picture, did you actually see did, was the steam, did you see the steam in your camera? Did you see it coming up when you, when you actually saw the picture after taking it? Um, yeah, you could see it had happened maybe once earlier in the game on that particular part of the field. So it, it wasn't going to, where the, the scrum had to happen, happen in a certain place for this to work. It, uh, it had, so that the light hit, the, hit it. Mm. So if it happened near me, it probably wasn't going to be as strong. So uh, I had seen it happen earlier. It, it, was, it, was, it was at a time of game where the bodies maybe weren't warm enough, so it didn't have the same impact. I may have shot it. I thought, okay, there's one to have in the, in the bank, but this could get better. How far into the game was this? This was into the second half. And I think when I look back in the pictures, I was really struggling for a picture that night. So thankfully, I got one out of it anyway, and one that I can say I'm proud of.
Thank you. Can you show us some more of your work? Yep. Um, so I'm a staff photographer with an agency in Ireland called Sportsfile. Sportsfile, in, in Ireland we're, we're, we're a big agency. In a global scheme, we're quite a small agency, uh, which is incredible considering this is the fourth award we've, uh, winner we've had in the world press, which is, I believe is a huge achievement uh, for an agency like Sportsfile. Um, and I think a lot of it goes down to our, our, our leader, our boss, Ray McManus, who has put the trust in our, in our photographers and given us the opportunities to, um, to, to have a bit of freedom and to travel the world taking great pictures. So that's probably what sports file are. But what we, our main work and what we do is, is Gaelic games. Gaelic games is our game. It's an Irish game. Um, it's, it's what uh, our, our, our work revolves around for 12 months of the year. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Um, this is Gaelic football and it's in Crow Park. It's probably one of the finest stadiums in Europe um, today. So most of us in this room are professionals or in some shape or form in life. Uh, and everybody in this picture is professional, likely or of some shape, uh, except the players on the pitch. So there's 31 people on this pitch. Uh, I can't be sure, but maybe the referee did receive a tenor for his, for his day's work but none of the 30 players received a single dollar for this occasion. And that's one of the great things, it's still amateur. Um, the reason I've, I've wanted to start with this picture, and it's, it's probably not the greatest picture I've ever taken, but it's, I want you to show the scale of the sport. The picture is taken um, on a camera that's installed on the roof a few days prior to the match. A little bit of honesty, I went up to do a picture to install the camera, it wasn't a picture I actually wanted. Something had changed from when we'd done a recce a couple of days previous, and the picture that I had intended didn't actually happen. So I'm the kind of person that is not going to walk away and say, OK, that didn't work and take his cameras down. I actually wanted to get a picture. So I installed the camera and left it there for a couple of days. Um, and in the end, I got, a, I got a picture that was referred to as the 4 million euro point or the 4 million euro score. It's uh, in the following day's papers. There's a gentleman on the bottom right corner who's kicking a point, it's an All-Ireland final, 82,500 people, he's kicking a score to level the game, deep into injury time, it goes over the bar, it's a draw, everybody comes back again in two weeks time. Remember, the 15 people that are on the pitch receive nothing, but the four million euros comes from TV rights, merchandise, ticket sales and all that. But the great thing is, that four million euros will go back into the GA, back into grassroots, and to keep the Gaelic games going as strong as possible. So the next picture, um, albeit it's, it's still Gaelic games, but it's ladies football this time. Uh, so ladies do play it, and we have a number of codes across, uh, across the Gaelic games. So ladies football is one, and there's, uh, you'll see a couple of more as we go along. Uh, this is something I had in mind for a while. So 12 months previous, the ladies football final was played in Crow Park. Um, I'd seen it on TV, I'd seen the shadows, I'm like, why has nobody captured a picture? So I, I stuck it in my head and said, right, 12 months time, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do this picture. The match was marked up, I wasn't on it, and I said, I was meant to be on a weekend off, and I just went to the boss and said, give me a free roll, let me at it, and I went up into the stands. Um, albeit there wasn't 82,500 people here this day, there was 46,000 spectators, for, and it was the largest attended female sporting event in Europe for that year. And I think it was a landmark for, for ladies' participation sport in Ireland for on, on this day, to have 46,000 people turn up to watch 15 ladies take on 15 ladies in an amateur game. I think that's incredible. Um, and you've soccer, it was in the same year that the European Championships held here in the Netherlands, I believe, and this was the highest attended sporting female sporting event of that year. Uh, by going upstairs into the stands, I think it gives me, the, it shows the shadows, the flow in the hair shows the motion, uh, and the colors, the striking colors really, uh, they stand out against the grass neutral background. Now I'm not one that spends his whole time in the stands, albeit the next picture is from the stands. Uh, but the reason I'm including this is, it shows 
uh, there was a story during the, during the rounds of time of how the team in white, which are Tyrone, had this defensive style of football and they were stopping every other team from playing football through their defence. I think it's important as a sports photographer to be able to know your sport and know the story, but being able to capture the story in that one picture. So how do you, how do you show this story of the defensive style? Well, this is it. You, you, you show the people, the players surrounding the opponents, and by doing it upstairs, you get a bit more flexibility because you don't have to worry about your backgrounds being clean and making sure the picture happens in the right place. You have a bit more freedom. So that's why on this occasion, again, I decided to, uh, to, go, to go up into the stands and photograph the game from, uh, from the press box. So that was Gaelic football. Um, there are a number of different codes across that come under the remit of the GAA, the Gaelic Athletic Association. There are um, Gaelic footballers we've seen. There's hurling, camogie, handball, rounders, even Irish dancing and storytelling. Now, we don't do rounders and handball that much, and I'm not really into Irish dancing that much either. So other photographers might have a preference for, for that. But this, this image shows hurling. It's been described as the fastest field sport uh, in the world. And believe it or not, until recently, they didn't even have to wear the helmets. The three foot long sticks in their hands, known as hurleys, are made of pure ash. So imagine getting a clatter of, of that um, across your hands. In this image, the ball is in such a position that mo most body parts are safe. But you can imagine when players are going up to catch a ball, that there's no protection and everything is fair game. The only thing you have that they try and protect their hands with is they use their hurl behind their hand. But yeah, I've seen some nasty injuries from it. The next one, again, is, um, just shows the deep concentration involved um, in, in hurling. Again, knuckles, see how close they are to the, to the hurls. It's all fair game. Um, but I think what I love about this picture is that the concentration, the eyes are on the ball. It's a bit like a golfer standing over, um, standing over it on the tee box, standing over the ball. Just the eyes are on the ball always. And despite the, the, the high level, uh, nature of the sport, the concentration is still there. The, uh, the consequence is occasionally that sticks get broken. In this case, we're looking that the sticks were broken off, off the opponent's stick, but I've often seen it broken off a player's back. Uh, bodies are on the line. Uh, if you look at this picture, from, it's from an All-Ireland final. Tipperary against Kilkenny. And the one player in the middle in that blue jersey is a Tipperary player. He's surrounded by well, the four Kilkenny players. And it's just, everything goes, everything goes. Um, everything's against them, they kept going. Also something you'll note from this, from the goalkeeper, it's quite evident, there's no shin guards. So it's a, it's a pretty brutal sport at times. Uh, but he just kept going and it's hard to believe from this situation that he, this, the ball actually ended up in the back of the net. And uh, I think they maybe even went on to win the All-Ireland final last year, but bodies are on the line. So the other principal sport, as we're going back to, is Gaelic football. Uh, some would say it's soccer using your hands. Uh, others would say it's rugby maybe without using the feet, uh, or using the feet. As a child growing up um, in Kerry, the highlight of our summer was being brought to um, they brought to a Munster final. Kerry against Cork. Kerry are the team in green, the good guys. Uh, Cork are the team in red. But that doesn't change, even though I'm so much older, 15, 20 years older. The highlight of my summer is still going back to Munster final days in Killarney, seeing Kerry against Cork, albeit in a, in a much different capacity these days. And probably a little bit more pressure on me. And again, the tackling, it's, it's, it's uh, one of the great arts of Gaelic football is, is, the, is the block and the, and the tackle. And it's by, again, all, all any means necessary. Uh, I love about this is the detail in the fingernails, just clinging on for hope. Um, another great skill of Gaelic football is the art of fielding, as it's called, or the high catch. It's becoming a lost feature of the game as managers set up their teams more defensively. Uh, to eliminate the clean catch. So it's a, lot, it's a lot harder to get the clean pictures these days. It's like you, generally you have players, opponents, crowding out the space. A 
referring back to hurling again that I mentioned earlier, this is at, at grassroots level. Um, this is a game, I was at one day, between two fierce college rivals. Um, to, they're both, both colleges are based in Limerick, one of the cities in the south of Ireland. And the man in the right corner here, he's actually quite a famous manager of a major team. His name is Davy, Davy Fitzgerald. And here he's in charge of one of the colleges in a volunteer capacity. But that just shows the, the kind of the ethos of the game. It's grassroots, you, you give back. So whatever you get out of the game, whatever bit of benefit of being a so-called celebrity or whatever comes with the territory, you, you give back as much as you can. And this is the manager, David Fitzgerald, and he's a great manager for photographers because no matter what you do, maybe not on this occasion in this picture, but he's the kind of guy that you can turn the camera at and you're going to get a reaction. So this is, um, like in most sports, there's a cup. In England, it's the FA Cup, but uh, in soccer, in, in Ireland, it's the Sam Maguire. Um, and this is what it's all about. This is what the summer, this is September, this is where you want to be. You want to be the team lifting that, that, uh, that cup at the end of it. And this is a, a player known as, uh, as, as Philly McMahon. He, so he's plays for Dublin, Dublin being the capital. At the moment, they're the dominant team. Um, and he's, he's a bit of a, he's a complex character to say the least. Um, he's off the pitch, he's, uh, he's almost like a lamb. But on the pitch, he's, like a, he's a bit like a tiger, really. Uh, he spends a lot of time in, in the stands because the, re the referees dislike for him. But on the other side of it, he does some amazing work for his local community. Um, he, when he was younger, he lost his brother to drugs and falling into the wrong company. And since then, he's made, up, made it his goal in life to help as many people as possible and to avoid the pitfalls in the Dublin community where he grew up. He's a great role model. Um, so this is what it's about. Philly comes from a suburb in Dublin, which has been run down, been demolished. But ultimately, the reason he's so good and what you might not understand is the ethos of the GA that this has, has hel helped him through everything. He's used the GA to get back into the community to help other people out. Um, and what the GA stands for is you, uh, you can't decide who, who you play for. It's where you're born. So you can't decide to play for Manchester United. You can't decide to play for Real Madrid, Barcelona, Ajax. It's where you're from. So before you represent the county, where you're born, you first represent your townland and your club. Uh, and the club where I was born, I want to show you this particular picture, which is, kind of means a lot to me. Um, it's something that I had, I had anticipated uh, because I know the passion that's involved in, uh, in, in this. So these guys are most of the guys I'd went to school with uh, in the background. It's, uh, the match was over, it was, it, they were coming back to the dressing room and I was like, something's going to happen here because I know this, is, this, is, this means a lot to these guys. So I was sending my last few pictures and I could just hear, I could hear a piper in the background warm me up and say, this is not, this is not usual, this doesn't happen every day of the week in, in Gaelic games. So I could hear the piper warm me up in the background and say, something's going to happen here. And just because it's, it, they're so passionate, you have to be prepared for anything to happen. So when I heard him warm me up uh, on the way down the corridor, I said, I better get back into the dressing room. And this is the result of it. Like, you just can't make this stuff up. To this day, I can't understand how the table held him up there. Uh, but it did. And it's just pure elation. They don't care about cameras, and that's the beauty of it. You go into a, a dressing room with, after a Champions League or something like that, and you have, it's so staged and it's managed because they're, they're worried about their sponsors and they're worried if they look good. And you have Cristiano Ronaldo looking in the camera saying, oh, I don't like that. They, these guys don't care, and this is, this is what I love about it. Uh, and that's the, the freedom of the GA, that you, get these, you can get these pictures. Um, the last picture in it is, uh, is this. <laughs> and again, it's, you, how often are you going to see this? How often are you going to see a baby inside in a dressing room? Uh, I think that's, again, another beautiful aspect of the Gaelic Games, that this, the player on the, on the second from left, he's, after, he's just after having a newborn child, and they bring the child into the dressing room. Um, afterwards and they, they love it and this is a picture the child is going to have forever more um, and the, the, what I really love about it is that the, the jersey that's on that child now the child may have been three four months old but when that child is 18 when that child is 40 when that child is 60 that same color jersey is going to be on that child you don't change you can transfer 
it's where you're born, it's, it's where you grow up, and that is what the GA is about. Thank you so much. I, I, I wish we had more time. Thanks. Because there's so much to say. I wish we had more time because there's so much to say about, about your career as a photographer. Yeah, Starting at the age of 18, going straight from school to, to Sports File and being That's trained right. by your elders there and becoming one of the finest sports photographers around now. And also, uh, and we'll continue with uh, other guests here, but uh, what I love about sports is that it brings smiles on people's faces because it's, 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 uh, it's very elating and uplifting to see such energy and uh, dedication and, uh, and uh, wonderful moments of uh, emotion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.